Okay, hello everyone in Ljubljana and Gimaraish. I am Razan Rashid. I present my work under the title BIM Automation Design Optioneering Toward Energy Performance Optimization. Okay, I will start my presentation by asking two main questions. What and why? What is the aim of this research and why do we need this research? This research aims to investigate and explore the capabilities of BIM automation techniques to enhance the energy efficiency in buildings in the area design stages. Why do we need this research? Building sector is one of the highest energy consuming sectors. Plus energy efficient design process is a highly complicated design process and usually designers just choose to overgo. And the available tools in the market focused only on the later and the detailed design stages and here we can find the gap. For the research methodology, we have uh, many qualitative and quantitative research methodologies applied. Uh, the qualitative research mainly focused on the literature review, which is mainly in two, ma two main areas, the main automation AAC and the automation and uh, energy analysis and uh, design optioneering. In this part, I focused on the literature review for uh, and analyzing for different workflows for energy analysis. And from based on these uh, analysis, I developed uh, many uh, different uh, workflows. Uh, okay. In this presentation, I will focus on the quantitative research, which is basically the energy analysis automation levels. Uh, the first level is the manual analysis, and then the visual programming, and the third level is the visual and textual programming. Now, in, um, in order to apply these workflows, we need the base case building. The base case building is a simple showcase building uh, with an area of uh, 250 square meters, and it's mainly two uh, stories. Okay, we talked about the uh, automation levels and the base case building. Now we will talk about the design engineering strategy. Based on what we are going to uh, create and generate different design options. Uh, the research will focus on the building envelope and mainly on the on the WWR, which is the window to wall ratio. Simply, we are having height list and width list for the uh, windows, and we will create the different design variations. In this case, we are having uh, 25 different design variations. And here's the base case. The criteria of selection. Now, based on what we are going to uh, let, let choose the best and optimum design options, of course, we will focus on the lowest energy consumption, lowest EUI, and it should be within the acceptable WWR range, which is from 30 to 45% uh, for the office buildings as their standards and research. Mainly the automation process will be summarized into three main steps. The first step is the uh, design option creation, and then energy simulation and daylight analysis. And the final step will be the data analysis and visualization. Now we will start with the manual workflow. This is the first, the first revision of the workflow. Uh, it was developed based on the uh, previous studies. And then after um, applying this workflow, we can see uh, like the workflow a little bit updated. And as we can see here with Every design option, we need to repeat this process again and again and again till we uh, create the different design options. In our case, we're talking about 25. So we need uh, to repeat this process, this loop, 25 times. Now we'll, work, uh, we'll uh, move to the visual programming. I'm not going to focus on this uh, uh, workflow because actually there's some limitations. This is the first uh, draft, uh, the first revision of the uh, workflow as based the, as per the previous studies. And uh, then this is the, uh, the um, updated workflow. As we can see, this workflow uh, failed due to the limitation of Dynamo nodes, uh, as there is no longer a link between Dynamo and the Green Building Studio. Now we'll move to the uh, final, the last uh, automation level, which is the visual and textual programming. This is the first uh, revision of the uh, workflow. And then after applying this workflow, we can see that the, we have uh, uh, minor changes. Uh, this part is uh, like we, we will create the different design options. I will go into two details into this workflow. And then for the energy analysis, uh, due to the limitation again for Dynamo, uh, the workflow changed a bit. This is the uh, final workflow. As we can see, like here is the design uh, option creations, which was done by Dynamo uh, with the Python scripting. And then for the uh, energy analysis, it was done using uh, Grasshopper and the climate within Rhino environment. And for the data analysis, it was uh, done by um, uh, like uh, Python scripting inside Jupyter environment. 
Now we will go to the start with the uh, automation steps, the process steps. Uh, the first step, as we said, it's the design options creation. As we can see, we have this uh, Dynamo code structure. Simply, we're having this input first. We are having the elements that I need to change. In our case, we're talking about windows. And then we're having the width list and the height list. And um, this is the path that I'm going to export the uh, different variations. And uh, here's the Python script. And as we can see here, simply by running the code, the uh, different variations and options start uh, generating one by one. Now, in this case, we are talking about only 25 design options. If you are going to add uh, different parameters like the wall systems, roof systems, we're talking about uh, orientation of the building or any other uh, uh, parameters, we're talking about hundreds or even thousands of design uh, variations. And of course, we couldn't uh, run, uh, like generate these options manually. Okay. For the energy analysis and they, uh, for the energy simulation and daylight analysis, we are having this uh, uh, grasshopper simple uh, code. Uh, in the first part, we are importing the GBXML file, and then we are we are having the energy settings, and then uh, we will run the simulation. The output of this uh, simulation is the um, one simple one Excel file. And for the last process, we're having the data analysis and visualization simply by running a very simple code to order the um, the design options uh, as per like the lowest energy consumption and to filter then these results uh, to have like the top three within the lowest energy consumption and filtered within the WWR range, we can see the top three options. And based on that, we can update our model uh, based on the selected design option. It also helps to like the data uh, visualization analysis uh, in Python. It helps to generate conclusions and uh, have some figures. In this figure, as we can see, uh, I set this base, like this is the base uh, case. It's the reference with zero. And here I can see that I have uh, the um, options with lower energy consumption uh, in green. And here in gray, I can have like the higher energy consumption. And here the five options, which is uh, the lower energy consumption within the acceptable WWR range. And based on this, I can choose the best option. For summary, I have this uh, comparison between the workflow, uh, the pros and cons for each work workflow. For the manual workflow, uh, for uh, like the positives that we don't need any uh, prior coding experience to run this analysis. For the challenges and limitations, uh, we can see that it's time consuming. It limits the number of design options that I can create, and we can face a lot of human errors. And uh, there is difficulty in drawing conclusions, especially if we're talking about a huge amount of data. For the automated workflow, uh, the pros, of course, it saves uh, time and it removes the limitations uh, uh, and it offers, of course, accuracy. Uh, and we can generate the design options stimulously. Uh, it's easier to, to draw design uh, to draw conclusions based on the uh, results. For the challenges and limitations, it requires a uh, high technical knowledge, and it depends on it depends on the functionality and capabilities of the available tools. And uh, we can face some uh, like uh, challenges and problems with the data interoperability issues. And of course, it needs uh, continuous maintenance, especially if we're talking about uh, different APIs for software. For the conclusion. For the, uh, as, as we can see, the manual workflow, it's time consuming, but it's a very important uh, part. Like before implementing any process, you need to run the manual, uh, uh, the manual workflow because it helps you to understand the breakdown for each uh, process. And of course you can test the model uh, and uh, the error ident identification. For the visual programming, uh, depending on the visual programming only, we couldn't like it's limit the full automation work. And um, as we saw like, for Grasshopper, it, it has like more developed, uh, let's say, libraries uh, in, um, in the energy. Uh, if we are talking about energy efficiency, it has like more developed libraries, more than Dynamo. But we can we will face some challenges in the interoperability between Arabic models. For textual programming, it enables uh, the automation for complex tasks and simplifies the creation of design options. And of course, it facilitates the generation of uh, informed conclusions. For the future development, uh, we have uh, three uh, points. Uh, like first, we can extend the variables and case studies uh, as we can have like wider array of uh, design uh, uh, variables and uh, parameters like the wall systems, roof systems. And of course we can have uh, different building types. 
uh, for the software and long per, uh, term performance, we can have like um, uh, better, um, uh, like uh, we can focus on the open source tools to have like better uh, and um, let's say like easier workflows. And uh, the most important uh, dimension that I want to focus on is the cost benefit analysis. Um, like if we can uh, add this aspect to the analysis, it will be more beneficial as we can run the, uh, we have the like initial cost, operational cost, and we can run the payback period. Because usually when you are talking about energy efficient, uh, energy efficient design, uh, clients uh, will be like worried about the cost. So adding this dimension, it will be more beneficial. Thank you.